Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Welcome to St. Isidore's Catholic Church as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. With full heart and full voice, let's begin this joyous celebration by singing together number 99, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 99, we will sing the Latin refrain, Venite Adoremus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus, be with you. And with your spirit. We gather this morning to celebrate one of the greatest events that took to place in human history. God the Son, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit created this incredible universe, said yes to the Father and said, yes, I will become a lowly human being. I will suffer and die on the cross so that they will have the hope of sharing in their glory forever in our kingdom in heaven. So we realize how blessed we are to be so loved by God who does this for us. We realize that we are sinful people and in need of his forgiveness. And so we pause and ask Jesus to forgive us for our failings and to help us become his holy people. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, 
Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry, together they shout for joy. For they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord.
sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him. He is holy, Lord. all the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice he has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of israel all the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God, all the ends of the earth have seen, the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen, the salvation by our God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took a seat at the right hand of the majesty on high. As far superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, 
and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn to the world, into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. He speak to God. In your heart and in your lips, that you may have worthy led fitting to proclaim his holy gospel. Hallelujah! Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When the angel went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas is an interesting day. For me, it's a, a time of mixed emotions, a time of joy. I have a lot of wonderful memories that I reflect back in my childhood, my earliest Christmases, uh, from the time I was... Uh, big enough to stand on the kneeler and hang on to the top of the pew and look over the top and uh, see the Christmas tree and hear the beautiful music that we had at Christmas Midnight Mass and things like that. The joy of finding Santa Claus had come when he got home. Um, a very joyful and happy time with a lot of wonderful warm and memories. And uh, then also a time of sadness. As I know that many people and many of you here this morning are mourning the loss of a loved one. And you'll hear their names being read this morning. And uh, so it's a time of intense loneliness, first Christmas without that particular individual. Um, and um, I'm with people almost all the time every day from morning until night. And I hear so many people expressing their worries and their concerns, worry about where our country is going. Uh, saw the news this morning where another 5,000 immigrants are trying to march down and cross our borders and so on. And we have to feel sorry for those people who have nothing. And that's why they're making a journey on foot of hundreds of miles and hope to get admitted to the United States. And yet, uh, so many things here we're worried about, our, our government, where it's leading us. Had many people express their concern about Pope Francis. And of course, I tell them we really can't rely on what we hear from the media because so often the secular media doesn't present what he's really trying to say. But still, it's a very worrisome and troublesome time. Uh, inflation this last year has been hor horrendous. Um, just so many things to be concerned and worry about. Um, not only um, have people lost loved ones, but members of their family are ill. Uh, some of them they know aren't going to make it to next Christmas. Um, 
parents concerned about their children and the direction they're taking in life. Children concerned about their elderly parents and taking care of them. And just so many things to be worried and concerned about. And um, we're for worried about the future and just where our country is headed. At the Midnight Mass, the opening reading was, The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. It was written at a time and just after Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Babylonians, magnificent temple had been burned to the ground, and um, many of them had lost family members, and those who survived were being let off as slaves to Babylon. And uh, so they didn't have much to be uh, happy about, in fact, really nothing to be happy about, but they had hope because 300 or 400 years earlier, God had promised David that from his descendants would come a descendant who would establish a kingdom that would last forever. So even in their darkest nights and bleakest moments, they had that hope and uh, longing for the future. And we're in that same situation today, only we have an even much greater reason to be hopeful because God, 2,000 years ago, took decisive action in our behalf. Through the, death of, uh, through the birth of his son, Jesus, God the Father asking the Son, would you be willing to become a mere human being and live among those people on tiny planet Earth? Planet Earth? Would you be willing to suffer and die so that one day uh, they could share in our eternal glory? And God the Son said, yes. He was born in Bethlehem uh, 2,000 years ago, uh, born to very poor par parents in a very difficult uh, time to live in one of the poorest countries in the world under Roman occupation, which was horrible. And he endured all the uh, aches and pains that we ever face in this life, the sadness, the loneliness, the lack of understanding from his disciples. Um, and uh, through his death and resurrection, we have the hope and promise of eternal life. And no matter how badly things go in our life, and no matter how awful it is to say goodbye to a loved one, we have that hope that one day, if we're faithful to the Lord Jesus, we will be reunited with our loved ones and know a joy that human words and, uh, can't begin to describe or our minds imagine. We have an incredible future awaiting us because of what happened 2,000 years ago with Jesus being born in Bethlehem. And so we always have to think about that and think about it often. And while we are worried and concerned about the trials and tribulations of this life, we also need to focus always on what God has done for us, his infinite love for us, and uh, his presence among us. What's so incredible is just a few minutes, uh, you'll be able to walk down the aisle and hold out your hands and receive the Son of God himself under the form of bread and wine. What an incredible experience. As Jesus once said to his apostles, even the greatest saints of the past, Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah, the great prophets, couldn't imagine what you have seen and what we can do here day after day. Uh, we are so privileged and so lucky. Um, sometimes people have a hard time believing that Jesus is truly present under the form of bread and wine. Uh, one of the ways I respond to that is by asking them, um, why were the Jewish people so cruel to Jesus? Why did they hate him so much? After they had scourged him almost to the point of death, crowned him with thorns, mocked him, spat in his face, slapped him around, nailed him to the cross and his hand in excruciating agony, and they're mocking him and making fun of him. Why did they hate him so much? It wasn't because they were such bad people. In fact, they were people who had such a love for God, they couldn't imagine that God would take on human form. That was just the very thought would have been sacrilegious to them. And so we find the answer in John's Gospel, chapter 17, Jesus cure the man on the Sabbath. The Jewish people, even faithful ones today, don't do anything on the Sabbath but worship God. I was in Jerusalem twice uh, in the Jewish quarters on the Sabbath. It's a ghost town, huge city, traffic five lanes in each direction, not a car on the street, nobody on the street, uh, nobody on the, in the streets. They don't do anything. About 15 years ago, um, 
On the national news, they were interviewing the high school senior basketball player who was the best basketball player in the nation among high school students. Every college wanted him to play. There's just one problem. He was Jewish, and it made it clear that he would not play on Friday night or the Sabbath. Well, that completely wipes him out from any college sport in basketball. And the person interviewing him said, don't you realize if you place those uh, qualifications on your time, playing time that you'll never be able to sign a multi-million dollar professional contract? And he said, I know, but my God comes first. That's how strongly some of the Jewish people observe the Sabbath. And here's this guy from Nazareth, ordinary, he's not schooled in their train of thought, and he's acting and pretending like he's God. And he cures this man on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees are furious. They want to kill him right then and there. And Jesus says, why, uh, for what of my good deeds do you want to kill me? And they said, it's not for any good deeds you do. You're a mere man and you're pretending to be God. And they thought he was being sacrilegious and that's why they hated him so. And yet that's exactly what happened. God the Son took on human form. He became one of us. He lived among us. He died among us. And if God could take on any form as he chose to become a human, human being, he could take on any form too. And Jesus made it very clear that he would give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink under the form of bread and wine. When the crowds first heard that, they thought he was crazy. They all left, thinking he was out of his mind. Jesus turned to the disciples and said, do you want to leave me too? And Peter stepped forward and said, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life. At the last supper in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's gospel, Jesus took bread and said, take this and eat. This is my body. Not a reminder, not a symbol, but this is truly my body. And then he took the cup of wine and said, take this and drink. This is the cup of my blood. Um, so Jesus is truly present under the form of bread and wine, God the Son. And in just a few minutes, we're privileged to receive him as we receive the Lord in the Eucharist. It's so important for us that we think of that often and then come to Mass, not just at Christmas or Easter, but every Sunday, and realize what an incredible privilege it is. And if we are faithful to the Lord Jesus, if we're strengthened by his presence through the Eucharist and follow his teachings faithfully through this life, one day, one day soon in terms of eternity, we will be allowed to share in his eternal glory for all eternity in heaven. And so we always need to keep that in mind and to realize how blessed we are. And even though there's a lot of pain in your hearts today as you come here and intense loneliness as you miss your loved ones, we have cause to rejoice. Uh, and we can actually be merry at Christmas. Uh, not merry in the sense of jubilant celebration and opening presents and having a good meal or whatever, but realizing that our loved ones who have gone before us are waiting for us. And one day, because of what Jesus has done for us, we will see them again. And after that, there will be no more pain, no more suffering for all eternity. And like Paul, the apostle said, uh, what God has revealed to us, um, the sufferings of this life are simply nothing compared to the glory that God has revealed to us. And so whatever hardships we face in this life, they're really nothing and compared to what in just a few moments in terms of eternal time, uh, the joy we will have forever and ever and ever. That's our reason for being happy at Christmas time. Uh, sure, we mourn the loss of our loved ones. We face a lot of trials and tribulations in life, a lot of worries and concern, uh, ultimately sickness and suffering and death ourselves. But after that, because of what God has done for us through Jesus, we have an incredible joy awaiting us. So wonderful that Paul himself, who had a vision of heaven, could only say, our eyes are not seen, our ears are not heard, our minds can't imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. And our loved ones who are departed from us already know that joy, and they're just eagerly waiting to welcome us into that eternal home that Jesus has made possible for us. So think about that often, reflect upon it, pray and ask Jesus to help you to be faithful to him. And even in times of sadness and intense suffering and pain and loneliness, you have cause to rejoice. And I hope for that reason, 
This will be a Merry Christmas. So with that in mind, let's stand and profess our faith by praying the creed. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, heaven of heaven and earth, and earth of all things visible and, and invisible. invisible. I, I believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten, begotten Son of God, God born of the, the Father before, before all ages, ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, who sends your Son Jesus to be our Savior, through his death and resurrection, we have the hope and promise of eternal life. Help us always, therefore, to listen to him and to follow him faithfully. Grant us this, Lord, the favors we now ask in Jesus' name. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop George Lucas, and for all people throughout the state of Nebraska and the Archdiocese of Omaha, that filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we may work together to share the love of Jesus with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the Church of God, that we may welcome with joy him who the Immaculate Virgin conceived by a word and wondrously brought to birth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For progress in bringing about peace between Russia and Ukraine and between Israel and Hamas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by hunger, sickness, or loneliness, that through the mystery of the birth of Jesus Christ, they may find peace in mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who mourn the loss of a loved one, that they may find peace in knowing that God the Son became man to show us the way to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially those who are near death, that they may be ready to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and be welcomed by him into the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died this past year, that they may rejoice with Jesus in the halls of heaven, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary and the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of our congregation that receiving Christ, they may learn also to welcome him in the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us now pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I ask you all to be seated now. Now we're reading the names of all those who have died and were buried from our church this past year, and we'll ring a bell. Joanne Campbell. Helen Zock.
Robert Mark. James Schaefer. Helen Utenauer. Barbara Torkson. Bruce Foreman. Sue Mitchell. Betty Davidson. Wilford Burnt. Joyce Van Dyce. David Bennett. Cole Pensick. Rita Schumacher. Connie Zarnick. Marvin Steiskel. Carol Ensminger. Dwayne Mick. Jeanette McCowan. Alice Rohde. Barbara Pensick. Robert Doman. David Duran. Michael Honky. David Kovanatsky. Timothy Christensen. Victor Brandel. Eugene German. David Korth. Mary Utenauer. Michael Langan.
Eugene Zevich. Connie Snyder. Randy Pilikowski. Margaret Mix. Richard Arndt. Maxine Sliva. Trevor Wolf. Bernard Selassie. John Putman. Kareen Seibler. Julia Stachura. Raymond Stock. Alma Schumacher. Patrick Gasper. Teresa Gambiga. Elaine Schmidt. Mildred Mix. Bernadette Widener. Dwayne Nicholas. Oren Stefanik. Rita Murphy. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may they rest in peace. May their souls and all the souls of the departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. As the gifts and the table are being prepared, please join in singing number 76, Away in a Manger, number 76. Good job. Good job.
God, we ask to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash them, give them a little iron. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our offerings be worthy, we pray, O Lord, of the mysteries of the Nativity this day that just as Christ was born a man and also shown forth as God, so these earthly gifts may confer in us what is divine through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this of his awesome mystery, Though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten for all ages. He now has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call on strain humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To 
you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make come a prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and for all who are dear to them, in the hope of health and for the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, and paying homage to their eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of the world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, and Andrew, and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by our protecting help. And therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this offering of this oblation of our, pray, our service, that your whole family, or that in your, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we deliver from eternal damnation and count them in the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks and praise, he broke the bread, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection to the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as you once were pleased, to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, and be filled with his every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, all your servants who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Let's pause for a moment and commend our part of loved ones to the Lord. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, 
and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, to those sinners who hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Isidore, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon to Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days and by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. 
My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in the refrain of Behold the Lamb. Let's join together in singing number 81, Silent Night, number 81. So 
Grant us, Lord, as we honor with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with fullness of faith the hidden depths of this mystery and to love them ever more and more through Christ our Lord. Amen. I do want to take this opportunity to wish you all a Merry Christmas, Mary, in the sense that God sent His Son to be our Savior, and if we're faithful to Him one day and for all eternity, we'll praise Him in His kingdom in heaven. So many people to thank for, to thank you in our parish. So many people are so involved in so many ways. Certainly grateful to the deacons for their ministry throughout the year. Choir members, extraordinary ministers at the Eucharist, lectors, uh, altar servers, etc., etc. the ushers. The list goes on and on. Um, the um, Jennifer and Aaron uh, and her family in dec decorating the church, not only at Christmas time throughout the year, and just we have hundreds of volunteers always stepping forward to do things. Uh, it's such a privilege to be here, seeing so many people so actively involved in our prayers. So I want to thank all of those people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's go forth singing number 86, Joy to the World, number 86.
Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. 